Live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE. Covering Open Source Summit North America 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Hello everyone, welcome to our special exclusive SiliconANGLE Media Cube coverage here in Los Angeles, California for the Open Source Summit North America. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman for the two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day two of our coverage of what's going on in the open source world as the Linux Foundation consolidates their shows into a big tent event. This is the inaugural event of now consolidated. A bunch of little shows come together. This is the big show where the Linux Foundation brings their entire communities together to talk and cross-pollinate. We had Jim Zemlin on, the executive director yesterday, outlined that. Uh, Stu, we're in our kickoff of day two, uh, where we're going to do some analysis and commentary. Um, but before we start, I want to get your thoughts on just day one. Yesterday, we, didn't ha we had a lot of guests, a lot of activities going on at night. We kind of divided it and conquer. What did you find it? Out? Yeah, so, so John, uh, you had done some coverage of LinuxCon a couple of years ago. It's my first time coming to this show. We do a lot of open source coverage uh, with the Cubes over the years. So coming in, it was like, okay, what are we going to be talking about? What's the vibe? Uh, and being a, a Big Ten event, you know, I was a little surprised to see, I mean, the, the conversation's the same that we've been hearing the last year. Kubernetes, kind of the, 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 the big wave that's coming in, not just in open source, but really the conversation in cloud, and really uh, was kind of the, the, the top issue, that kind of containerization, the, the new way of architecting things. You know, Linux absolutely is down there underneath and, and majorly important, but you know, it seems to be that rallying around uh, everything Kubernetes. Mesos Con's right next door, and yeah. we said two years ago, you never would have thought that Kubernetes, that Mesos would be saying, you know, the best place to run Kubernetes is on DCOS. You, you know, it was the, the container wars, the orchestration wars, all those things. Mm -hmm. Kubernetes really leading the charge there, and it really fed into a lot of the conversation that we had here. Yeah. And in our conversations, like with Christine Corbett, and in some of the keynotes this morning, really talking about the, the power of collaboration, community, uh, you know, stuff I Inclusion. know you're passionate about, about, John. Yeah, I mean, Stu, here's my take on the big story coming out of LA for this event. And, and I think the, the top line story is this. The open source community has had so much success going in the early days, and depending on which generation you want to call it, you know, we're a little bit older, old school, um, maybe fourth generation, what do, you can argue the point, but here's the bottom line. The big story is that the Linux Foundation, Linux apps are everywhere. It's a global standard, it is happening, and the scale of which the growth that's going to be coming is unprecedented, and I think for the first time in the history of the computer industry, you're seeing a pause, you're seeing a moment of excitement from the executive director, the Linux Foundation, the board members, and the participants in the community who are realizing, holy shit, this is going to grow very huge. And open source is going to go to a whole nother growth level. It's going to be exponential in scale. And you're going to see some blitz scaling going on, as Jerry Chen at Greylock and Reed Hoffman talk about. And that's going to change the nature of the participation. You're going to start to see new accelerated things, certification. The role of the foundation certainly has always been to serve the sustainable communities of open source. Their role will change. As stewards of open source, the responsibility and the reliance on the open source software will continue to grow. And I think that scale phenomenon of open source is potentially might be the biggest wave of all to do. And I think some people are going to be washed like driftwood and some people are going to thrive and survive. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. We look back at Linux, and Linux took a long time, you know, more, more than a decade, to really kind of gain mainstream adoption. You know, Red Hat, of course, came out of there, there uh, with, with kind of the, the leadership and the dollars, but Linux was the foundation for everything being built today. There would be no Google without Linux. There would be no Amazon as we know it today uh, without Linux. Uh, and I really liked, uh, I, think, I think it was strong resonance. Everybody's a little surprised. Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the keynote this morning, someone that we know, you know, from the movies. And we're here in LA, they're like, oh great, they brought an actor. Well, he's actually pretty passionate. He has this, uh, this website, hitrecord.org, where they do you know, collaboration Collective from, from intelligence. Uh, but it's people that are you know, drawing and creating music and creating you know, little clips and everything, and they said how a community can help build on uh, what they're doing. He said it's about community, fair compensation, and collaborating, yeah. rather than just you know, socializing or sharing uh, or any of those things. And something you know, we, we've talked about a lot is, how do, what does the translation of participating in the community translate into, into dollars, translate into value? I know something you're really passionate yeah, about too, this is the, Again, the big story is the growth, but let's yeah. unpack that a little bit. Open source has always been about sharing, it's always been about community, it's been about innovation, 
freedom, they call them radicals in the early days, but now they've got to grow flexibility and, in, and execution. Here's the bottom line. The leadership of the open source is going to morph radically. And you go to the program here, you got inclusion, you got a little politics, not like politics of open source, politics of cultural shaping with Christine Corbett more, uh, Morgan. So she's talking about that, it's very relevant. You have um, Dan Lyons coming in talking about the programmer culture. You have the actor coming in talking about collective intelligence. I believe that there's going to be a new way of how people are going to be compensated, how participation is going to scale. And this comes down to some key point, tell, tell signs. One, a new generation is coming into the open source world, this younger generation. They love serverless. They love DevOps because they don't want to deal with the infrastructure. So all the old folks, <laughs> guys like our age and gals, they have to provide leadership. I talked with Sam Ramjay about this in detail about how some of these stewards in the community have to step up and be leaders in a new way of governing because as the onboarding of more source code, more projects with IOT, with cloud, you're going to see a new generation of young developers that quite frankly are going to want to run fast, run faster, and they don't want to deal with networking. <laughs> they don't want to, deal, they want serverless, they want true programmable infrastructure and that's going to potentially cause some, some changes, maybe at the leadership level, but also how they run things. So I think, Stu, this is something that we're watching as a big wave. Yeah, and it's funny because you always talk, oh, I'd love to be able to extract away, even virtualization, oh, we're going to make it real simple, you know, you don't have to worry it anymore. Well, you know, John, we got some more interviews today. You know, networking, storage, these things just don't magically fairy dust, everything works really well. You know, data has gravity, networking you know, has lots of challenges we have uh, to worry about. Open source is now infused into you know, all of these environments, uh, you know, really helping to build those distributed architectures. We had a number of interviews yesterday talking about, you know, these things are not easy. These are tough challenges. You know, even you talk to people and say, Kubernetes is awesome, sure is not simple. It oh, is not, not easy to roll out. not any projects out of the CNCF you know. yet talking to Chris uh, yesterday, the COO, he said, look, we haven't even graduated anything out of Kubernetes. But this is the point, Stu. Kubernetes is a tell sign. That's not fully baked yet. It's an, un an under the hood feature. Serverless, which I love the name and hate it at the same time because <laughs> there's servers out there. The notion is, is that the new developers don't want to provision hardware. Mm -hmm. To them, they just want a resource pool, so serverless is a good trend. The name is kind of weak in my opinion, but I kind of love it and hate it at the same time. Yeah. I mean, John, it's just like cloud was 10 years ago. <laughs> what do you think of serverless do? I mean, bottom line is that, how could you not like service, serverless? Because as a developer, you're just programming infrastructure as code. Right, a absolutely. I, I want to be able to use things in a much more granular format. Uh, I, I want to be able to, when I'm not using it, not pay for it. It really fits into that environment. Uh, you know, something of course that this show we're talking about is today, you say serverless, I think AWS Lambda. It's a proprietary uh, you, you know, offering. You know, how does something like Kubernetes fit into that? There's containers underneath, yeah. but there's a, there are a, a few different open source versions of functions as a service. Yeah. There's OpenFAS, there's OpenWhisk, uh, there, there, there's a couple of others. So how will I be able to you know, take what we were liking about containers in general and Kubernetes specifically, that I can work across a number of environments and yeah. make sure that I'm not, John, I'm going to say the word, locked in yeah. to a certain provider or a certain piece of the ecosystem. Well, open source is so robust right now. Again, 10% of the original ideas can be written in, in, in code that could be part of a 90% open source based code base. Jim Zemlin, that the executive director, called that the code sandwich. But the bottom line, in my opinion, Stu, and you were just pointing it out, is that the leadership has to scale. And I think one of the things that came up in some of my hallway conversations last night, talking to some folks who have been early on in open source, in the old days, you, you had to hate someone. There was an enemy, there was Microsoft, and now they're on board. Uh, there was the big proprietary main for mini computer guys with proprietary operating systems. They were the enemy. The, who's the enemy now? The enemy is slowness, right? So there's kind of a, a, a fundamental question is, open source doesn't have that enemy anymore, it's the standard. So yeah. the question is, what is going to motivate the organizations? To me, I think it's speed. Speed is the new normal, scale is the new normal, slowness and silos will be the enemy. Right. Absolutely, John. To something I've heard at a number of the events we've been at recently, companies, number one thing is not cost, it's speed. And one of the reasons that so many companies work on, contribute to open source, is to help them with that speed. They can't wait for the turn of the crank from the old software uh, beast, or oh gosh, if there are some chips or hardware involved yeah. in that, open source, I want to be able to contribute to the code, work on the code, ship it, 
move faster. And the other thing that came up yesterday I want to get your thoughts and reaction to is you have a, a fashion model going on here. Never fight fashion, as we say, a good marketer would say. You have CNCF is very fashionable right now, but there's blocking and tackling projects that have been around for a while, like um, the networking um, piece. These are stable, great projects. They just don't have the pomp circumstances like CNCF have. So the, the balance of being trendy is an issue now for these open source communities. It, no one wants to work on a project that's boring, but the relevance is important. So how do you, how do you react to that, Stu? Because this is now a dynamic. It's kind of been there for a while, but now with the plethora of projects out there, are you nervous that fashion, fashionable, trendy projects like CNCF might suck all the oxygen out of the, uh, the, the, the governance? No, John, I, I mean, for, from, from a press and a marketing standpoint, they, they get the attention. But uh, you know, I, I think that the, the stats really prove out there's so many projects out there, everybody's contributed to a lot of them, but it is something that developers should think about. Uh, you know, we did an interview of a company I remember years back, said, how do you, you know, get the best people and how do they choose what to do? Oh, whatever they feel is good. And I'm like, well, come on, you got to put yeah. a little bit of a business guidance on that um, to, to make sure what's, what's going to help your business, what's going to help your career if you're an individual contributing to this. Um, there are plenty of options out there, uh, both for starting new things as well as contributing to the big ones out there. And I, I liked what I was hearing uh, from the Linux Foundation is how they're going to give some governance uh, to companies as to the, the health, that whole chaos yeah. uh, that, that, that they rolled out to talk about the health and the circular ma maintenance uh, of things out there. Uh, but uh, you know, so much activity. Kubernetes by, by no means is taking you know, all of the attention. Uh, it just happens to be the, the current hotness. Well, there's some key under the hood details that, that are being worked on. That's the exciting part. Linux is a standard, it is powering. Most of the apps that are written are essentially Linux apps. If you look at the OS underneath, and again, the apps, again, the DevOps mindset is, is here and now it's scaling, and things like serverless are going to be more greatness for developers, certainly as companies like Google, IBM and others come in with real code and share and collaborate, a lot of people can participate in the greatness of open source and I think that's the future is bright for Linux and the open source summit community. Stu, day two continues live coverage here in Los Angeles. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, coverage of the open source summit North America in Los Angeles. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>